for uncompromised gospel, theologically proven and guided by the Holy Spirit. Apostle Lebonkiana, a proven man of God. And the entire Shekinah Deliverance Ministry cordially invite you to our Sunday services from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. for our first service and from 10 to 1 p.m. for the second service and every Tuesday and Thursday from 5.30 to 7.45 the church is located in Omoja in a market stage inside Shekinah Court. For more information, kindly follow our Facebook pages at SDM Kenya Shekinah Deliverance Ministries or contact 0722699740. Shekinah Deliverance Ministries, a place where God belongs to everybody. Come and you shall be blessed. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless this day. We pray for your grace to be with us. And your purpose in this session to take place we take authority against any opposition against any heaviness against any slumber of the spirit we rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ Father we have gathered here for one purpose to elevate your name to worship you in this place and for that reason God we speak against any sound that is speaking to the thoughts of your people. Let's appreciate our bishop in the house. Let's the Lord Jesus with a holy shout. Nataka ungeokie jirani yako mpatie i5 mwambie you are blessed. Like it turn to your neighbor give them a high five mwambie umebarikiwa. Mwambie ready for your encounter this morning. Mbejiandae kwa kutembelewa kwako asubuhi ya leo. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Yes. Are you ready for the word of God? Mko tayari kwa neno la Mungu. Pena wa Bibles. Tufungule bibi tufunge biblia zetu. The book of Daniel, Kitabu cha Daniel, chapter three, Daniel itatu. We are reading from verse thirteen, kwanza msero kumi na tatu, to verse twenty-eight. Paka shiri na nani? I honor and I celebrate the grace of God upon our bishop. And the privilege to share the word of God this morning that has given me. I also celebrate everyone who has taken time to be here together. I know for you to be here, it is a step of faith. And God is not looking for bigger faith than the faith you have exercised this morning. For you to step out of your house and to come to this place 
that faith is enough for God to bless you. Because you have come to a place where he calls his. Sababu tumekuja pahali ambapo Mungu yupo. And I'm sure that God is going to minister to you. Raise your faith to him only. Raise the situation you are passing through to him only. And I know he's going to meet with you. And after these things will be totally different. Because he is a faithful God. Are you ready? Tuko tayari. Let us read in Swahili. The book of Daniel, chapter 3. We are reading from verse 13 to 28. Daniel, chapter 3. Basi Nebukadneza akatoa amri kwa Asira na Gadhabu waletwe hao Shadraka, Meshaki na Abednego basi wakawaleta watu hao mbele ya mfalme Nebukadneza akajibu akawaambia enyi Shadraka, Meshaka na Abednego Je ni, mak- ni kwa maksudi hata hamkumtumikia Mungu wangu wala kusujudia sanamu ya dhahabu niliyosimamisha basi sasa kama mkiwa tayari wakati mtakaposikia sauti ya panda na filimbi na kinubi na zeze na santuwi na zumari na namna zote za ngoma kuanguka na kuisujudia sanamu niliyosimamisha ni vema bali msipoisujudia musipo mtatupwa saa hiyo hiyo katika tanuri liwakalo moto naye ni nani Mungu yule atakayewakuwa ninyi mikononi mwangu Ndipo Shadraka, Meshaka na Abednego wakajibu wakamwambia mfalme, "E Nebukadneza, hamna haja ya kukujibu katika neno hili. Kama ni hivyo, Mungu wetu tunayemtumika anaweza kutuokoa na tanuri iliwakalo moto. Naye atakuokoa mikononi mwako, e mfalme. Bali kama si hivyo, ujue e mfalme, ya kuwa sisi hatakubali kutumika miung, kutumikia miungu, miungu yako." wala kuisujudia hiyo sanamu ya dhahabu iliyosimamisha ndipo nibukaneza akajaa ghadhabu na sura ya uso wake ikabadilika juu ya Shadraka Meshaki na Abednego basi akatoa amri watie moto ile tanuri mara saba kuliko desturi yake ya kutiwa moto kisha akaamuru baadhi ya watu mashujaa wa jeshi lake kuwafunga Shadraka, Meshaki na Abednego na kuwatupa katika ile tanuri lililowaka likiwa moto basi watu hao wakawafunga wakiwa wamevaa suruali zao na kanzu zao na majoho yao na mavazi yao mengine wakatupwa wakatupwa katikati ya ile tanuri iliyokuwa ikiwaka moto basi kwa sababu ya amri ya mfame ilikuwa ni kali na ile tanuri lilikuwa na, lina moto sana Mwako, uh, mwako wa ule moto ukawaua wale watu waliowashika Shadraka, Meshaki na Benego na watu wao watatu Shadraka, Meshaki na Benego wakaanguka wakiwa wamefungwa katikati ya lile tanuri iliyokuwa imewaka moto. Starehe 4. Ndipo Nebukadnezar akastaajabu akainuka kwa haraka akanena akawaambia mawaziri wake, "Je, hatukuwatupa watu watatu wakiwa wamefungwa katikati ya moto?" wakajibu wakamwambia mfame kweli e mfame akajibu akasema tazama mimi naona watu wanne nao wamefunguliwa wamefunguli, wanatembea wanatembea katikati ya moto hali hawana dhara na sura yake yule wa nne ni mfano wa mwana wa miungu kisha nebukaneza akaukaribia aka mlango wa lile tanuri ilikuwa likiwaka moto akasema Enyi Shadrach, Meshaki na Abednego watumishi wa Mungu aliye juu tokeni mje huku ndipo Shadrach, Meshaki na Abednego katoka katika ule moto na maamri wasimamizi watawala na mahakimu waliokuwa wamekusanyika pamoja wakawaona watu hao na kwa ule moto walikuwa ha, hauna ya kuwa ule moto haukuwa na nguvu ya juu ya mili yao wala nywele ya vichwa vyao hazikuteketea wala suruali zao hazikubadilika 
wala harufu ya moto haikuwapata hata kidogo Nebukadneza akanena akasema na ahimidiwe Mungu wa Sadraka Mesaki na Abednego aliyemtuma malaika wake akaokoa watumishi wake waliomtumainia wakaligeuza neno la mfame na kujitoa na kujitoa miili yao ili wa, miili yao ili wasimtumikie Mungu mwingine wala kumabudu ila Mungu wao wenyewe Bwana Yesu asifiwe Praise the Lord Hiyo mengeti sita tunaza keti As you sit tulivyoketi I would love us we read together first number 15 Ningependa tusome pamoja mstari wa 15 I know you came with your Bible. Jamu likuja na Biblia zenu. And you are ready to engage in the word of God. Na mko tayari kufuatilia neno la Mungu. I'll count 1 2 3 then you are reading together. Tasabu 1 2 3 alafu tusome pamoja. Are you ready? Tuko tayari. Mstari wa 15 verse 15. Verse 15 only 1 2 3. Now When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes and all kind of music. If you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you'll be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what god will be able to rescue you from my hand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know when you read the first 15 wakati unasoma mstari wa 15 and you go down there you also read first 28 na usongelee pale chini usome mstari wa 28 you see how man naanza kuona jinsi mwanadamu without god bila mungu can't achieve anything haezi faonekiwa kwa chochote bwana yesu asifiwe amen Ukiangalia kwa undani uone vitisho if you read study the 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 threats Nebukadneza alipatia hawa watumishi wa Mungu that the king Nebukadneza gave to the servants of God aliwaambia mtatupwa katika moto he told them that you're going to be thrown into the furnace na nitaona ni Mungu mgani huyo and i will see who is this god ataweza kukuokoa kutoka kwa mikononi mwangu that will help you from my hands bwana yesu asifiwe praise the lord na baada ya mungu kujidhihirisha and after god revealing himself ukisoma first 28 we read verses 28 unaona ule mfalme tu aliyesema nitaona ni mgumu gani you will see that same same king who said we will see which god it is anasema na tukuzwe Mungu wa Shadrach Meshach na Abednego now he says that let him be worshiped the god of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego yule ametuma malaika wake na kuokoa watumishi wake the one who sent his angel to come and rescue his servants hao watumishi walimwamini yeye these servants believed him na wakataana na sheria zangu and they refused to follow my, my, my tena walikuwa tayari kutoa maisha yao yote ready to give the lives kwa ajili ya kumwabudu for the sake of worshiping him haleluya amen nebukadneza kwa sababu kuna watu walijitolea nebukadneza because there some people who give themselves out wakasema sisi tunajua mungu wetu and said we we know our god haijalishi ni kitu gani kimesimama mbele yako doesn't matter what is standing in front of you my brother my son to tell you there is god in heaven ndugu yangu dadangu nataka kuambia kwamba kuna mungu mbinguni there is god in heaven who is dependable kuna mungu mbinguni ambaye tunaweza mtegemea There is God in heaven you can trust him with your everything. Kuna Mungu aliye mbinguni unaweza muamini na kila kitu chako. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. And the most expensive thing this world is your life. Na kitu cha ghali sana kwa maisha kwa dunia hii ni maisha yako. There is God in heaven that you can trust him with your job. Ambaye Mungu mbinguni unaweza muamini na kazi yako. There is God in heaven who can trust him with your health. Kuna Mungu mbinguni unaweza muamini na afya yako. There is God in heaven who can trust him with your finances. Kuna Mungu mbinguni unaweza muamini na hela zako. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. This God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Mungu huyu wa Shadrach, Meshach na Abednego is a God that is dependable. Ni Mungu ambaye ni wa kutegemewa. 
and I thank God because he had this kind of followers. They were ready to give up their lives so that they can honor him. They knew who their God was. They were not trying to know their God. Hallelujah. When all this judgment was taking place, God was not speaking, he was silent. But these people knew certain truth about him. Whether he's going to speak or whether he's not going to speak, I serve God who changes not. I know him what he says about the people that honor him and the people that fear their God. Hallelujah. Amen. said, even if he is not going to rescue us, we are not going to bow down and worship that image. Because we know him. We are not trying to know him. We know King, you are so powerful. You have got the power to destroy our lives. But there is one who is powerful than you are. There is one who has got the final say concerning our situation. He has not spoken to us to give us an alternative voice. We know it's a faithful God. Although we respect you, King, we have got one that we worship and we honor. You are not worthy our worship. There is one that is worthy my worship. There is one that is worthy to give my life to. There is one that will fight my battles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God was silent. Amen. Amen. And the king became furious because there is somebody that had put his trust in God. Do you know when you put your trust in God only you rattle demons. When you become serious with your God you are now rattling demons in the hell. And they start rising against you. Sometimes you are Christian. You may not have done anything wrong. And you find yourself passing through difficult situations. I want to tell you not because you sinned. Because sin before God is something very small. Because it was defeated by the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. But when you commit yourself to God, enemy tries to rise. But the good thing about it, he always rises late. Because God usually goes before his people. You try to throw tantrums here and there, but he's already defeated. What Nebuchadnezzar was doing, he was throwing tantrums. The matter had already been settled in heaven. Amen. 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 You know, if you are not careful with God, you may miss your destiny. Because you don't want to pay the price. Amen. When you read verse 28 going down, 
After God came and appeared in that furnace, He called them out. And Bible says, they didn't smell of smoke. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. didn't even have a stench of fire of smoke. Leave alone, the hairs been burned. Ata mosh. Even smoke itself. Hawakunuka. They were not smelling of smoke. When you start burning something there, and you just pass by, just not, it, not even stopping, you just pass by the fire. You will feel a smelling smoke. The Bible says these people didn't have a smell of smoke in them. There's none of the hand that was burnt. Amen. Yes. Yes. The soldiers that threw them in the fire. The Bible says all of them are consumed by the fire. But they had not gotten into the fire. But they were all burnt to death. But these three people they had already given up their life for the sake of God. They believe that they cannot mix their worship together with the worshiping of the two God. And God came in for them. Na Mungu akakuja kwa ajili yao. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. The truth that you know about your God, ukweli ambao unajua kuhusu Mungu wako, is the same truth that will set you free. Ni ukweli huo tu ambao utakuweka huru. These people knew the truth about their God. Watu hao walijua ukweli kuhusu Mungu wao. They were not trying to understand their God. They were fully convinced who their God is. You know, I want to tell you about faith. Today we are talking about faith. God does not give you faith for getting something to eat or for you to get a nice cloth to put on. Amen. That is the lowest thing about faith. That's why Jesus usually would despise anything to do with the clothing, worrying about the food. That's why he says, do not worry what you will eat and wear. In fact, he despised that thing. He likened it to the birds of the hair. He said the birds of the air do not farm. Do not store anything. But God feeds them. Amen. If you have a child in the house, does that child need faith to eat their lunch? Do they need faith with their mother? Today I've got faith. I know lunch is going to be served. They are fully assured. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter what you are going through, whether you are going to build or to construct, there shall be food in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. The faith we are talking about it's a faith that God has given us that we may serve him. Amen. 
The faith that God is talking about. It's a faith that we are given to serve God. Because the work that God has given us. It will serve him by faith. It will serve him by faith. Bible says Bible nasema, anything that you do tafanya, that is not of faith si ya iman, it is not of God. Si ya Mungu. Amen. So the faith that God wants us to exercise Kwa imani Mungu tukwe, tukwe nayo, it is faith to serve him. Ni imani ya yeye. And when you put this faith in action imani hii kwa matendo, God will be pleased with you. Hello. Hello. When you allowed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to go through this process, he wanted to test their faith in the service of God. Your faith will be put into test. God will allow situation to come to you that your faith might be tested. And you get to know where you are with your God. Man. When if this testing of your faith comes, it will engage to know your level and depth of engagement with God. Amen. When this testing came to these three gentlemen, the king was surprised. He said, although I'm a king in this land, I've never seen people like this one. They are ready to give up their life for the sake of what they believe in. And now since I've seen their God, I'm going to give them promotion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That thing that you are scared of, when you overcome it, it is the one that is holding your promotion. Amen. When you overcome it, that is the gate of your promotion. I don't know what is standing before you. I don't know what is scaring you. But I'm here to tell you if you are able to overcome it, if you are able to say, I am going to move forward. I have been prostrating for so long. I have been waiting for so long because of fear. But today I'm going to move forward. Today I'm going to make a step forward. I've read about this God. And I know he's a faithful God. He said those who trust in him. They will never be put to shame. Why, I, why should I continue? Living this condition. And yet I know there is God in heaven who rewards the people that serve him who rewards the people that fear him hallelujah amen the faith of serving God moving to another level it's when you are ready to pay the price amen there are people that live in sin Kuna watu kwa gambi. because they don't want to commit their self, themselves before God kwa sababu, kwa mungu. and trust God fully Na mungu kika, peki yake. because they think when they pay the price kwa sababu, of living what is giving them comfort ya kile ambacho 
God may they may think God may forsake them. Wanafikiri kwamba Mungu atawaacha. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Today I want to talk to somebody. Leo nataka niongee na mtu. That thing that makes you be scared. Kile kitu ambacho kinakufanya ukuwe na uoga. When you live living that life. Wakati utaacha kuishi maisha hayo. That you will suffer. Yes. That you are going to suffer. Kwamba uta utapitia matatizo. I want to tell you Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Nataka nieleze kwamba Shadrach, Meshach na Abednego. The eight reason walikuwa na sababu to denounce the god kumkana mungu wao and take the comfort of the king na kuchukua wingi wa mfame wao and be satisfied na watoshelezwe with those small positions that they were given na vyo hivyo ndogo ambavyo walikuwa wamepatiwa but they were ready lakini walikuwa tayari if you want to sack us kutufuta kazi even the small positions you've given us please take vyo ndogo ambavyo umetupatia zichukue hallelujah hallelujah Bonessa Sofia man they were employed walikuwa wameandikwa kazi and the king was their master na mfalme alikuwa mkuu wao it is him that gave them this job yeye aliwapatia kazi hizo remember these people were foreigners kumbuka watu hao walikuwa watumwa so they knew for us to get a job in a foreign country kwa hivyo walijua kwamba sisi tupate kazi kwa nchi ambayo si yetu it must have taken the heart of god ni mkono wa Mungu tu hallelujah amen So the same person that gave them the job. Kwa hivyo mtu yule ile tu aliyopatia kazi. He came threatening with a sin. Akakuja akwa akwa kupatia ma threatens. If you don't bow down and worship. Kwamba ikiwa hautainamia na kuabudu. I am going to sack you. Nitawafuta kazi. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. They, they looked at the king. Wakaangalia mfame. And there's a king. Do you know where we are coming from? Nakao mbe mfamu unajua tunakotoka. Do you know where we are coming from? Unajua tunakotoka. Kama mkristo, as a Christian, lazima ukwe na historia mahali umetoka na Mungu wako. You have to have a history of where you have come from with your God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hello. Amen. You know even when Jesus was about to be crucified. Unajua hata wakati Yesu alikuwa anakaribia kusulubiwa. He looked at the devil in the eyes. Akangalia shetani kwa macho. And he told him, "Na kamuelezea, I know what you are about to do. Najua kile unakaribia kufanya. Do it quickly. Ifanye kwa haraka." Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Because he knew him kwa sababu alijua yeye since he was a, a baby kutoka akiwa mchanga enemy wanted to kill him adui alitaka kumuua god rescued him took him to Egypt mungu kata akamokoa akampeleka misri they want to kill him before his time wakajaribu kumuua kabla ya wakati wake anapita katikati yao and you pass through them hallelujah amen hey when the right time for him came wakati wakati uliofaa kwake kuwawa ilikuja he knew this is my time to be crucified akajua kwamba huu ni wakati wangu wa kusulubiwa he went to the devil himself akamwendea shetani mwenyewe akamwambia devil I told him devil i know what you want to do najua kile ambacho unataka kufanya do it quickly ifanye kwa upesi hallelujah hallelujah because he understood kwa sababu alielewa the times and the seasons muda na misimu and what he was what he came here on the hard to do na kusudi ambayo alikuwa amekuja hapa duniani ni kufanya hello amen so shadrach like said if you want to take it take it kwa hivyo shadrach akasema ukitaka kuchukua vya hivyo vichukue nebukadneza told them mfalme nebukadneza akawaambia you are not aware how i'm doing these jobs i'd given you kazi hizi nilizowapatia i took them long time ago nilizichukua kitambo sana in fact i'm not here to discuss about the job hata tusiko hapa kuongea kuhusu kazi i'm not discussing about your finances nizungumzie fedha zanyu now i'm discussing about your life nazungumzia sasa kuhusu uhai wako if you are not going to worship kiwa hautaabudu miungu yangu yangu you are going to be burned mtachomwa Hallelujah. Amen. You see how enemy will push you to the wall. Unaona vile adui atakusukuma paka kwa ukuta. Unafanya hatua moja unafikiria umemshinda. You do one thing you think you have defeated him. Tomorrow is coming to you. Kesho anakuja na kitu kingine. Hallelujah. Amen. But I thank God. Lakini nashukuru Mungu. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They were born again. Walikuwa mokoka. Hallelujah. Amen. 
they knew their god walijua mungu wao they had given up everything walikuwa matila kila kitu they knew they are not living for themselves walijua kama haishi kwa ajili yao but they knew that is god in heaven lakini walifahamu kama kuna mungu mbinguni who cannot forsake them ambaye hawezi waacha who cannot leave them ambaye hawezi watenga bwana yesu asifiwe amen You know when you are born again unajua wakati umeokoka for God to take over your life ili Mungu achukue maisha yako and you live a life of peace in the ministry of chaos uishi kwa amani miongoni mwa mambo mengi you must also die in God kupasa ufe ndani ya Mungu hallelujah amen Jesus said Yesu akasema Those who die for my sake wanaokufa kwa ajili yangu and they are ready to lose their life na uko tayari kutoa maisha yao they shall find it wataipata bwana yesu asifiwe amen he was not talking about the physical death hakuwa anazungumzia kukufa kwa kiasili he was talking about dying out of sin lakini kukufa kutoka kwa dhambi and be connected to god fully na kuunganika kwa mungu wa wote Hallelujah. Amen. Paul said I do not live. Paulo akasema kwamba siishi tena. But is a Christ who lives in me. Lakini ni Kristo anayeishi ndani mwangu. The life I'm living is not mine. Maisha ninayoishi si yangu. It is for the Christ. Lakini ni yake Kristo. Hallelujah. Amen. So these people had nothing to spare for their for themselves. Kwa hivyo watu hawa hawakuwa na kitu cha kujishikilia. But they had faith in God. Lakini walikuwa na imani kwa Mungu. And they did not worship the idol. Na kuabudu sanamu hiyo. And because they were red given up their life. Na kwa sababu walikuwa shatoa maisha yao. God came to show himself. Mungu akakuja kujidhihirisha. That he can rescue them from the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. Kwamba anaweza kukomboa kutoka kwa mkono wa Nebuchadnezzar. To show that is a powerful God. Kuonyesha kwamba ni Mungu mwenye nguvu. When you say I'm not going to remain in that camp. Unaposema kwamba sitasalia pale hapo. I'm not going to remain in that sinful life. Sitasalia kwa maisha hiyo ya ya dhambi. Even though that sinful life is the one that pays my rent. Hata kama maisha hiyo ya dhambi ndiyo ambayo inanilipia kodi. Even if that sinful life I live is the one that fuels my car. Hata kama maisha hiyo ya dhambi ndiyo inaweka mafuta kwa Even that sinful life the one that buys my clothes Ata, that I put on. Kama maisha hiyo ya dhambi ndiyo inan inanivisha today i am ready to step out siku ya leo nitatoka nje i want to know what will happen najua nataka kujua kile kitatendeka when i cast my life to god fully kati nampatia maisha yangu yote kwake mungu hallelujah hallelujah and this is a kind of life that god is calling us to live na hii ndio maisha ambayo mungu anatuita tuishi god is not pleased when you live a life that is not fully connected to him Mungu afurahi na maisha ambayo unaishi ambayo haijakamilika kwake He is a jealous God Ni Mungu mwenye wivu Hallelujah Amen So this guy stepped out Kwa hivyo watu hao wakatoka And they committed their life before God Na wakatoa maisha yao kwake Mungu And they said God Na wakasema Mungu take over Chukua mamlaka Take over my life. Chukua mamlaka juu ya maisha yangu. I know you are able to rescue me. Najua unaweza nikomboa. Must I sin for me to live? Lazima nitende dhambi ili niishi. Must I worship that idol? Lazima niabudu sanamu hiyo ili For me to be able to live. Ili niishi. Must I speak a lie? Lazima nidanganye ili niishi. Must I fornicate? Lazima nitende dhambi ili niishi. For me to get a house rent. Ili nipate kodi. No I'm not going to do it. Last afanya haya. I know there is God in heaven. Ndio kuna Mungu mbinguni. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you allow me to go through shame. Ikiwa umeniruhusu nipitie aibu hii. Let it be. Acha ikue. This is for the honor and the glory of God. Ini kwa kwa heshima na utukufu wa Mungu. But if he comes to rescue me. Lakini ukikuja kunikomboa. Glory to him. Utukufu kureje wewe. But I'll not do it. Lakini hatutai mwinamia. Hallelujah. Amen. God has got a final say. Mungu akona usemu wa mwisho about your situation. Kuhusu hali yako. People may look at you and write you off. Watu wanaweza kuangalia na kutupilia mbali. People may look here your sick condition. 
watu wanaweza kuangalia kwa hali yako and the right to off na kuwakutupilie mbali bwana yesu asifiwe amen one time wakati mmoja we took our dad to hospital tulipeleka baba yetu kule hospitalini and when the lab test came out na wakati results zilikuja i'm talking about 14 years ago naongea kuhusu miaka 14 imepita our pastor knows this testimony papa anajua ushuhuda huu Now doctor said From what I'm looking in this lab test Kulingana na kile naona kwa matokeo haya What you need to do Kile unapaswa kufanya This man first of all is old Mtu huyu kwanza amezeeka Bonessa sifiwe Praise the Lord He was around 72 years old Kwa mifika miaka 72 hapo And doctor took bible Na Na, yes. Doctor took his Bible. Oh, daktari akachukua Biblia yake. And he read to me a verse in the book of Psalms. Na kanisomea uh, kifungu ukule uh, Zaburi. It says, Ikasema, A man shall live 70 years on this on mwana, this world. Mwanadamu ataishi miaka 70 hapa duniani. After that, baada ya hayo, it will be a life full of trouble. Itakuwa maisha iliyojaa matatizo. Bonessa Sefiwe. Praise the Lord. Doctor told me this is now where your dad is. Daktari akanemleza kwamba hapa ndo nipo babako yako. Remember we're talking about 14 years ago. Kwa tunazungumzia kuhusu miaka 4 zimepita. I can only put him on painkillers. Naweza naweza mpata tu madawa za kutuliza uchungu. I told doctor. Nikamwambia daktari, you spoken. Umeongea. And I've heard you very well. Na nimekusikia vyema. But there's another one that has not spoken. Lakini kuna mwingine hajaongea. We are in Nairobi hospital. Tulikuwa na Nairobi hospital. We are dealing with the consultant. Tunaongea kuhusu tunazungumzia kuhusu Not a person with one degree. Si mtu ambaye ana cheti moja. Not a person trying to treat patients. Si mtu ambaye anajaribu kuponya watu. He knew what he was saying. Alijua kile anasema. I told him doctor. Nikamwambia daktari. I respect you too much. Na kuheshimu sana. But give me one week. Lakini nipatie wiki moja. We are going to start the painkillers with you. Tutaanza madawa haya nawe. Give me back my dad I go with you. Patie babangu niende naye. Hallelujah. Amen. A doctor said I grant you your request. Daktari akasema amchukue. One by one. Moja moja. Came to the office of my bishop. Kakuja ku ofisi ya mtu. And I gave the report. Na nikampatia matokeo. And I told pastor I've not agreed with the report. Nikamwambia mtu ngoja kwamba sijakubaliana na matokeo. Bishop told me can we hold hands we pray? Sikufa kana mtu tushike mikono tuombe. Na tukaomba. And we prayed. Nikamwambia kwa sababu tumeomba na Mungu ametenda. Only because you prayed and God has done. After one week I'm going back to the hospital. Baada wiki moja nitarejea hospitali. With my dad. Before we see him, we are going to pass through the lambala tree. Amen. I'm talking to you on who has the final say. People may talk about your situation. People may write you off. But before God has spoken, don't take their word. Those are the voices of the enemy. Those are the voices of Satan. They want you to be discouraged. They want you to give up on your vision. They want you to give up on what God has spoken to you. Amen. And we took our test. And we went to the doctor. Give the Test to the doctor. Here we come. Ah, here we are. How are the results? Here they are. Here are the results. The previous test was about going to 60 percent. Matokeo ya liopita ilikuwa six asilimia sitini hapa. Now the test that we came up with. Asa matokeo ambayo tulikuja nao sasa. It was 20 percent of the sickness. Ilikuwa asilimia shirini ya ugonjwa huo. God has dealt with the 40 percent. Mungu alikuwa metatua asilimia rubaini ya ugonjwa. And do you know what God doctor asked me? Na naja ni nini daktari aneluliza? And he spoke in Kiswahili. Na tukaongea kwa Kiswahili. Mulipeleka mzee kwa mganga mgani. Where, which, which craft did you take your father to? Which doctor? Which doctor? Oh. Mulipeleka mzee kwa mganga mgani. Where which which doctor did you take your father to? And I told him, ananikamwelezea, there is one powerful witch doctor. There is kuna mchawi mkuu sana. Which the witches of all witch doctors. Mbaye ni mganga wa waganga. And he's called Jesus. Na anaitwa Yesu. Hallelujah. Amen. From that minute, kuanzia dakika hiyo 
doctor was encouraged daktari alitiwa moyo to start uh, ministering to my dad kuanza kuhudumia baba yangu until to date paka siku ya leo whenever i go to see him wakati wote naenda kumuona he asks me ananiuliza is your dad still alive baba yako ako hai bado i tell him yes and the kicking namwambia ako hai na ako na nguvu how old is he kuna meka ngapi i tell him is about 86 going towards 90 ana karibia miaka 90 Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said the people started seeing together their dad they have died. Now what I akasema kwamba watu ambao walikuwa na ugonjwa pamoja na baba yangu wameshakufa. Why am I telling you this? Sababu gani naelezea hii? The situation that you may find yourself in. Kuna hali ambazo utajipata ndani. It is only you and your God. Ni wewe tu na Mungu wako. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. There is no time to fast and pray. Hakuna wakati wa kufunga na kuomba. Shadrach didn't know. Shadrach they did not know how could you they will be amply brought before king. Kwamba wataleta mbele ya mfalme. But when they appeared before king, kila alipofikia mfalme, a decree was issued immediately. Na kitu kandikwa hapo hapo. They must worship idol. Kwamba wa ail aida wa budu sanam or they die. Ama wafu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. That's why you need to be equipped all the time. Because you never know what may test your faith. you never know what may test your faith. Kwa sababu hujuni nini itajaribu imani yako. Because devil does not sleep. Kwa sababu adui alali. It's looking for somebody to devour and destroy. Tafuta mtu wa kushambulia na kuharibu. It's looking for visions. Anatafutilia maono. To destroy and to devour. Kushambulia na kuharibu. It's looking for families to tear down. Anatafuta jamii za kuangusha. So you must be a watchman. Kwa hivyo kupasa uwe macho. You must be alert all the time. Uwe macho kila wakati. When he comes to you, wakati nakuja kwako you are able to tell him off unaweza kumtupilia mbali bwana yesu asifiwe amen when god is silent wakati mungu ametulia does not mean he's not working hamanishi kwamba afanye kazi bwana yesu asifiwe amen when god is silent about your situation wakati mungu amenyamaza kuhusu hali unapitia does not mean that he is not working hamanishi kwamba hafanyi kitu is waiting for your faith to manifest nasubiri imani yako idhirike because it is only faith Kwa that you are going to manifest ni kupitia imani tu ambayo utadhihirisha that will give him honor and glory ambayo itampatia yeye utukufu na heshima that's why he says without faith kama ana nasema bila iman you cannot please him hawezi mtumi hawezi mfurahisha bwana yesu asifiwe amen it is only faith ni imani tu Once it has gone through wakati imeonekana ime, ime and you go out the other side na unaenda kule upande mwingine and the people look at you na watu wanakutazamia they they shake their hand wanatikisha vichwa vyao and they say yes na wanasema ndio this is god huyu ni mungu in heaven god is smiling mungu mbinguni atakuwa na tabasamu and they say yes na anasema ndio This is my servant. Huyu ni mtumishi wangu. He did not love himself so much. Hakujipenda sana. But he wanted my name to be glorified. Lakini alitaka jina langu litukuzwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. That's why you honor God. Ndio maana wakati unamheshimisha Mungu. At the end of the day, siku itakapoisha. Shetu akamesha the men the king. Sadrak Meshak na Abednego to confess who god was walifanya mfalme akiri mungu ni nani kwa sababu they were ready to give up their lives because walikuwa tayari kutoa maisha yao for the sake of this kingdom kwa ajili ya ufalme wa mungu bwana yesu asifiwe i don't know the trap was only to compromise unajua tatizo tu ni compromise that is only thing that is only trap enemy has put there devil is accuser of brethren satani huwa an accuse wa umini he is waiting for you to drift anasubiri tu utoke kwa laini kidogo and you go before god na mwende mungu and you start saying look at him naanza kusema muangalie yeye look at her muangalie yeye Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. But when you remain firm, wakati lakini wakati unasimama wima, you don't give him a foot old. Au mpatie msimamo. That thing that you think, 
kitu hicho ambacho unafikiri you can get it easily through your own way unaweza pata kirahisi kupitia njia yako god has got better things for you mungu ako na vitu bora zaidi kwa, kwa ajili yako Bwana Praise the Lord. Not the thing that you think you can get it easily. Kile kitu ambacho unafikiri kwamba utakipata kwa urahisi. Through your corrupt ways. Kupitia njia zako ambazo si halali. Through your compromising. Kupitia njia zako ambazo si halali. God has got in store. Mungu ako ka- katika gala yake. Better things than what you think. Kitu bora kuliko zile ambazo unafikiri. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. God has got better things for you. Mungu ako na vitu bora zaidi kwa ajili yako. Keep on trusting him. Keep on believing him. Amen. Another point I want you to get. The Bible says. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 to 3. Hebrews chapter 12 Let us fix our eyes on Jesus tuweke macho yetu kwake Yesu because he is the author kwa sababu ni mwanzilishi and the perfecter of our faith na anayewekeza imani yetu when you fix your eyes on Jesus wakati macho yetu yako kwa Yesu you take over all your battles atachukua mamlaka kila vita vyako when peter so Jesus walking on water. Wakati Petero alimwona Yesu akitembea juu ya maji. He asked Jesus if it is you. Akamuuliza Yesu kama ni wewe. Allow me to come to walk on water. Niruhusu nije nitembee juu ya maji. And Jesus told Peter now come. Na Yesu akamuelezea Petero na sasa kuja. And Peter started walking on water. Na Petero akaanza kutembea juu ya maji. Walking on water is not easy. Kutembea juu ya maji si rahisi. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Walking on water. Kutembea juu ya maji. Have you ever tried walking on water? Usijaribu kutembea juu ya maji. Those people who swim wale ambao uogelea even floating on water is a problem hata ku float juu ya maji ni tatizo live alone walking on water waachana na kutembea ku float tu but jesus told peter lakini yesu akamwambia petero yes come ndio kuja and peter stepped out of the boat na petero akatoka kwenye mashua and he started walking on water akaanza kutembea juu ya maji his eyes were fixed on jesus yake yakiwa memlenga yesu because he told him come and walk on water kwa sababu alimweleza kuja ukatembea juu ya maji jesus spoke and told him the most difficult thing yesu alinena akamwambia kitu kizito sana it is very hard to walk on water kama ni ngumu sana kutembea juu ya maji but because god has spoken lakini kwa sababu mungu alikuwa amenena i told him yes come and walk on water na akamwambia ndio kuja utembee juu ya maji peter took a step of faith petero akachukua hatua ya imani and stepped on the boat na akatoka nje ya mashua out of his comfort zone kutoka kwa wastareza and he says since god has spoken na kasema kwamba kwa sababu ni mungu ameongea i'll not fear anything sitaogopa chochote because god has called me kwa sababu mungu ameniita and god has told me to walk on water ameneleza nitembee juu ya maji i believe in his word naamini kwa neno lake i believe he has told me to walk on water naamini amenekiwa ameneleza nitembee juu ya maji it is possible inawezekana because god has spoken to me kwa sababu mungu amenenenea and i've heard his voice na nimesikia sauti yake telling me to step out of my comfort zone ikiwa nitoke kwa wastareza and I started walking on water before men it is not possible but before god it is possible hallelujah hallelujah faith it is the one that makes you achieve the impossible with men and if a woman of faith if a man of faith if a youth that you desire to exercise your faith you want to see the mysteries of god you want to see god working in your life do not like staying in your comfort zone hallelujah amen 
always been desiring to hear the voice of God. What is God saying about this situation? I know people have written me off. People are saying I'm coming from a poor family. I do not know any God the Father. I'm here in the streets of Nairobi. And I'm looking for a job. Who is going to help me? This situation I am into. It is very difficult. I need someone to help me. Leave the time to listen to the voice of God. And whatever voice I'm going to hear from God. Step out of your comfort zone. Start walking on the water. When you start walking on the water, there is nothing you're going to see. It is only danger that will be surrounding you. But you keep on walking on the water and fixing your eyes on Jesus. Always reminding him it is you that you told me to step out and I obeyed your voice it doesn't matter whether I live or die I'm ready to obey your voice hallelujah hallelujah I'm ready to obey your voice yes I had your voice before me it is danger but I'm ready to walk on water where seems to be no life even though I walk in the valleys and the shadows of death I fear no evil because you are staff they comfort me amen when you are out there now you are depending fully on God. Peter was not depending on the, on the boat. He started walking where Jesus was. The boat was far away. Praise the Lord. This is what God enjoys. Hello. Amen. Do you know what God enjoys? God is pleased when you leave the world and you close yourself in that room. Two of you. God. And you tell God. When I look into my life, it is only you. Not only my husband. Not my wife. Not my brothers. Not my sisters. I do not know anybody in the government. Hallelujah. I only know you, God. Come and rescue me. If you do not come in this situation, people will despise the God that I serve. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what God's calling us. Hello. Amen. To fix our eyes on him. And to shut your ears. Because your people are going to despise you. What do you have people to honor you? What do we have for people to honor you? What do we have for people Enemy will make sure you are despised. Enemy will make sure you are properly despised. But there is God in heaven who is ready to honor you. Who is ready to come in for you. Who is ready to take for uncompromised gospel, theologically proven and guided by the Holy Spirit. Apostle Lebonkiana, a proven man of God, and the entire Shekinah Deliverance Ministry cordially invite you to our Sunday services from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. for our first service, and from 10 to 1 p.m. for the second service. And every Tuesday and Thursday from 5.30 to 7.45.
the church is located in Omoja Inaku Market Stage inside Shekinah Court. For more information, kindly follow our Facebook pages at SDM Kenya Shekinah Deliverance Ministries on contact 0722699740. Shekinah Deliverance Ministries, a place where God belongs to everybody. Come and you shall be blessed.